Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Fred Peabody. He's a filmmaker, a storyteller, a documentarian who, who we've had on Face to Face before. Uh, we talked to him a couple of years ago uh, when his uh, new film premiered at TIFF, I believe, All Governments Lie. And so it was a real pleasure to have Fred back on the show. We certainly had plenty to talk about. And, and really what we were here to talk about uh, was his new film, or is his new film, The Corporate Coup d'Etat, which is going to be uh, coming out at, at Hot Docs. So make sure you get out to see it. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be a theatrical release down the road and look for it, you know, coming soon to some sort of video on demand service near you. Uh, Fred and I uh, don't waste any time and we get right into it. And we, we, we talk about, you know, impression and, and power and democracy and corporatism uh, cash and control how's that for alliteration we get into this you know this whole sea of digital information that we are um you know surrounded by and and in some respects kind of drowning in i suppose abandoned libraries and we talk about offshore manufacturing and free enterprise and 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 the unconscious civilization and how important uh, this this notion is but also the the book and john ralston saul and 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 this book that was written in this prophetic piece written back in the 90s we talk about compassion and the other in reality tv and and why donald trump uh, for fred is the fast talking salesman there's there's some real wonderful moments in this film and 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 you're going to want to you're going to want to um dial in it's it's the kind of film that that you might want to write an essay about but it but it but it, it it's not academic it is and it isn't there's there's comedic moments and and there's thoughtful bits and it's a it's a deeply engaging piece so so uh, stay tuned not only for the conversation but but also for the film as i said coming coming uh, soon to a theater near you fred peabody coming right up talking about the corporate coup d'etat and don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and my speaking uh, you can find out a little bit more about what i do there and and reach out to me if if uh, need be and and uh, here on Face to Face, you can support the work that I'm doing by uh, getting behind us on uh, Patreon.com. Uh, certainly would be appreciated. And if you can't do that, and I do get that, uh, uh, a quote, uh, 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 some kind of a review somewhere would be really welcome, especially on iTunes. We'd really appreciate that. And uh, share share the interview with others. Share Face to Face with others. We've got a newsletter. You can sign up there and don't forget rabble.ca for a whole host of other interviews and podcasts and blogs and articles and and people that you're going to want to engage with and uh, don't touch that dial coming right up the corporate coup d'etat fred peabody's new film at premiering at hot docs 2019 well welcome to face to face we're joined by uh, once again one another very special guest here with us today to talk about his new film the corporate coup d'etat fred peter Fred Peabody is here with us. Uh, Fred, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Thank you, David. It's great to be back with you again. And and you are a returning guest. So I, I did a quick yep. quick re- quick little bit of research about three years ago. All governments lie. Um, maybe maybe before we start talking about the new film, uh, tell us kind of other than making this film, what what have you been doing since we last yeah. chatted? Well. Uh, Pretty much just making this film. <laughs> got it. Got it. No, no time for much else. No, I bet. Uh, but I bet. but um, I, yeah, when we uh, the film that you and I talked about uh, previously uh, that I directed was called "All Governments Lie," which is a famous quote by uh, the late great independent journalist I. F. Stone, who's inspired a lot of the uh, younger um, uh, independent journalists who are uh, some of the best around today, Mm -hmm. people like Jeremy Scahill and uh, Amy Goodman and uh, uh, Glenn Greenwald and uh, many others. Uh, So that documentary was about how uh, the mainstream corporate media, uh, which most people get their news from, is not doing a very good job Mm -hmm. of exposing government 
uh, deception or are just checking, um, uh, you know, what governments are putting out. And instead, uh, the mainstream media tend to act more as a, um, I don't know, like a, uh, a conveyor belt for statements right, coming out right. of uh, out of Washington, uh, out of the State Department, out of the White House. Now, obviously, things have changed a bit with Donald Trump, even though it's the same old game. It's just they have a, diff, a much different opening uh, front man, so to speak, and uh, that's a whole other story. But well, and that comes out, uh, and that really comes yeah. out in the new film, right? Yeah. I mean, it really does. I, yeah. Would you would you almost say um, for those who have seen all all governments lie? Would this almost be a part two to that in a sense? Is that a fair? Kinda, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. In, in, it follows on and it expands things. So in all governments lie, we were mainly talking about. Uh, the difference between independent investigative adversarial journalists following in the footsteps of I.F. Stone um, and contrasting what they were doing with the mainstream corporate media right. and analyzing wh why were the corporate media so different. Uh, in this new film, The Corporate Coup d'Etat, we, we are just, yeah, we are expanding that idea and, and looking at the overall picture of the influences of uh, basically corporatism uh, and corporate money on democracy, and particularly using it as an example because it's the poster child for this kind of thing, uh, the U.S. system and how the U.S. democracy has been hijacked by corporations and corporate money. I love the um, let's let's get right into it. And by the way, congratulations on the film. I absolutely loved it. It's it's uh, well, thank you. it's compelling. It's can I say that it's fun to watch? I mean, sometimes I almost yeah, feel like yeah, that's I, being I always disrespectful. To that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always forget to mention that. But yeah, I, I, I think uh, with both those films, you know, I, I, I like to I like to use humor uh, when I can uh, to, you know, to make important points. And, uh, yeah, you do want to make it, and then we get quite a few laughs. Well, and it, at, and it really... At various it, points, <laughs> but, you, but it, you know, laughs which, which at things that, that are making a serious point. Laughs with, laughs with impl implications, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. C c comedy with causal connections. How's that for some alliteration? Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of my favorites, by the way, and I'm just going to do it right now, is, is the, the Trump quote where, where I forget who the, the journalist is. So you want to be associated with Mussolini? And he said, no, yeah. no, I want to be associated <laughs> with interesting quotes might exactly. be one of the funniest the lines of all time. It's the long pause yeah. after Chuck Todd asks him that question. Oh, it's where hysterical, you, you know, Fred. You, you clearly see that um, he's, 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 he, he realizes that, I think he realizes that right, he, right. he's done something stupid by retweeting a quote by Mussolini. <laughs> and even though he says, oh, I knew it was by Mussolini, I, I doubt that he did. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's that pause where you, uh, you, I notice audiences, it's you know, the silence, it's the silence, it, the, the audiences react usually with, uh, with laughter. Well, I know it's a lifelong goal of mine. It's to be interest. It's to be associated with interesting quotes. So it's, uh, you know, it yeah. really is, it really yeah. is something to work towards, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. let's start with Gordon Gecko. Uh, I, I just, I, I love the fact that you took a clip out of the Oliver Stone film, um, you, and Gecko saying to Charlie Sheen's character, you're, you're, you're not naive enough to believe in democracy, are you? Um, yeah. Is yeah. that kind of, was that sort of the premise or the thesis statement almost or the thesis question for, for the film, Corporate Coup d'Etat? Well, yeah, it certainly uh, encapsulates that basic idea beautifully. Um, and, uh, of course, Oliver Stone, had, you know, uh, came on board with, with uh, my previous film as executive producer, which really helped us to... Um, uh, just having his name attached yeah, helped us to, yeah. to get attention for the film. And with this one, I didn't want to ask him again, but he kind of gave me a helping hand to get my first theatrical documentary, you know, up and running. And uh, so this time I just, I asked him for advice on, on a rough cut and he, he sent me some very helpful advice and at the same time really praised what, uh, 
what I had done in oh. this rough cut with the film. So um, anyway, uh, thank you, Oliver Stone. But yeah, yeah that, that that's a perfect. And he did see that clip, and and uh, so you knew it was in there. But um, uh, it, 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 as in many of his films, there there, there are. He is making really serious points, mm-hmm. uh, and as he says, I'm not a journalist; I'm a dramatist. Mm-hmm. So, people who who you know, like nitpick his films and say, "Oh, well, that didn't exactly happen that way." Well, he's not claiming that this is a journalistic account, but but anyway, yeah, he he, he at the same time is portraying, uh, you know, um, uh, problems in in the U.S. Uh, political system, in U.S. society. Uh, that that uh, journalism uh, in the U.S. was not doing a very good good job of exposing, and the mainstream corporate media are still not. And that is again the the slow motion corporate coup d'état that has taken place over the last few decades to the point now where uh, you know billionaires and the Koch brothers and their billionaire friends are are uh, totally controlling the U.S. Uh, political process. Um, I don't know if totally is the right word. Right, but, right. But clearly, because of the huge amounts of, of cash that the corporations, especially in the U.S. system, are allowed to donate to politicians, uh, they, they, they create a monster. And then once the politicians get in, um, of course, they're going to listen to the lobbyists from that very corporation that gave them tons of money. Is there a sense? I love. I love. By the way, uh, you, you, one, one, I think once we get to the titles for the film, uh, there's a great that great sort of shot that I guess it's not really an establishing shot at that point, but but over uh, in, in the background, there's a train. Um, kind of, I don't know if it's yeah. leave, leaving the station or coming into it, but I couldn't help but smile and thought as I reflected on what I was about to watch, is it, is it too late? Has the train left the station in a sense? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly hope not. I and hope I, not either. I, uh, I certainly, uh, you know, I try to be an optimist. I think I am an optimist. I think, I know I, I have faith in, in humanity and, um, the last thing we should, all, any of us should be doing is, is giving up, you know, um, at, rather than fighting for a better society, fighting for a just society, so well, to speak. Well, and Fred, I think, I think it, that, that, that spirit for me anyway really comes out. I mean, I've often th- uh, thought of myself and even, you know, sort of introduced myself to people as a hopeful cynic. I mean, there's this sense of realism and cynicism. You watch a film like this and you go, right. wow, if, if 30% yeah. of this tr- is true, we are so screwed, you know? Yeah. And yet... I love that. I love those two words. Yeah. Uh, that's a great, that, that is a great description, hopeful cynic. I, I, uh, I may rip you off with on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, go, but yeah, that kind of go right ahead. Describes, so I guess the way I feel, it, that of course, we, we have to be highly skeptical. We have to uh, be critical thinkers, and um, uh, we almost all have to be investigative journalists. I tell right. people that, well, you know, in the sense that you've got, especially with the internet. I mean, you have to check out whatever is coming to you, and it might be coming to you through Facebook or Twitter or emails from your cousin you know but right. you've got to go on and and do the research to find out uh what is the credibility of well and isn't whatever. and isn't and isn't that sort of one of the i mean there's so many points in your film and any great film to me any great doc is about so many things other than actually what you're watching about there's so much more going on than meets the eye in a great film and 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 but but one of the things that chris hedges talks about near the end of the film is this idea of of literacy right and being able and the and the yeah. way you get to critique that is by being connected and by going a little bit deeper than the surface so be aware of what's going on but but try to try to reveal or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Peel back the layers on the on the substance. Ask the tough questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, we all we we are all immersed in a, just a a sea of digital information. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. to the point where it's sometimes hard to um, sort it all out and. Uh, it's more important now than ever. To, are you, are you, know, you have, Fred? Are you have guilty? quiet moments of reflection? Uh, quite, I'm very guilty of it. Quite, yeah. quite, quite. Well, I was just going to say, are you guilty of ever clicking on those um, uh, 
what do they call those clickbait where the the it's like some weird article about some movie star or something <laughs> yeah i from, mean it's, I, I definitely yeah, it's same. almost like a head slap or like oh my god i <laughs> what can't have believe I I've, yeah. I, I've gone to this you know <laughs> what have i done and yeah you you've got to you, you you've got to uh, you can smell it pretty fast when but this it's, is, so, it's something is it's, it's is, pretty uh, true well i think it's it just cl- clickbait it raises some pretty interesting questions, uh, as does the film, with this idea of a sea of digital information. How do you filter it out? How do you deal with it? Yeah. Is it is it in a community, yeah. uh, or you know, do you raise children who ask questions? Do you do you encourage that in your team at work, wherever you choose to work? It, does it change the way you teach and all those things? Right? I mean, I yeah. I, I mean, I. By the way, I gotta say, what a what a, gr- a delightful uh, uh, the meeting of Cornell West and John Rostin Saul over at tea. I, I would have loved yeah. to have been. There yeah, for that conversation, I, by the way, it's just talking I, about I peeling back so the layers. That, yeah, and the, the, I, I was so happy that we were able to just just to be there to film that scene and and to uh, to get the two of them together. Um, and I think that's, that's another way that you know we we all need to kind of figure out whose books should I be reading? Right, actual right. books, you know, and not just Twitter. I mean, Twitter is great because it's often has links, especially if you follow good journalists, it has links to long form uh, articles. But even beyond good long form articles, you know, reading books, as as you mentioned that Chris Hedges uh, is advocating for towards the end of the film, uh, the books are there, but nobody reads them, mm-hmm. I think is the quote mm-hmm. by him. And, and, mm-hmm. we, we, uh, and, the fo- and the picture that we have over that, uh, that's voiceover a little bit, um, and, and you're looking at this abandoned library in Camden, New Jersey, which is a perfect metaphor for what he's saying. It, it's an old uh, abandoned building that we visit earlier in the film right. when uh, one of the, the locals who may be part of the drug user community but, but had some interesting things to say, and I, I don't think he was on drugs at the time, but, but told us about you know seeing uh, – Someone who had overdosed on the steps of that abandoned library uh, in Camden, and uh, I believe it's a library that was built in the 1800s, and now it's uh, it's got uh, trees growing up right in, right in the middle of the building. Uh, so it, it's a great. It's a sad metaphor. Well, a lot of on. a lot of your film, it seems to me, and I'm pretty sure I remember this from All Governments Live, very much about juxtaposition and 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 maybe even paradox, contradiction. I suppose they're sort of the same thing. But can you talk a mm-hmm. little bit about that? Is that is that just for emphasis? Uh, is that sort of is there is there? Um, I mean, um, it's a form of storytelling, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure what you mean by. Yeah, so well, just the idea of uh, uh, well, you know the demolition of, of steel mills, the 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 um, an abandoned hospital, you know, in the film. I mean, yeah. like like oh, you say, well, these are beautiful yeah. metaphors for 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 things. Well, yeah, I mean, you yeah. Can, well, you, they're powerful metaphors. They really are they, uh, metaphors. Uh, yes, in, particularly in filmmaking. Uh, visual metaphors uh, can be extremely powerful, and uh, you know, uh, all many of the filmmakers that I admire, you know, uh, are, are very good at that. Uh, and you don't want to make it too obvious that hey, here's a visual metaphor, but <laughs> right, right, but but uh, subtly and uh, you know, used sensitively used. Um, Particularly in film, uh, metaphors are uh, very, very powerful and can communicate more than than words. Sometimes, just mm-hmm. the, yeah, I think what you're referring to is the juxtaposition of of what the soundtrack is doing with what the picture is doing. Right. Um, and yes, yes, I do. I do like that frequently. That contrast just speaks about it. Well, just the the idea of you know, is it Camden or Youngstown? I think where where you're showing the the decline of the working class and of of these these steel mm-hmm. towns that were all about constructing, they were all about building, they were all about shaping yeah, yeah. something out of 
out of something else and yet here we're watching them you know broken down overgrown and, and in fact in some cases being actually demoed i mean the i the deep irony yeah. of that just yeah. is is, is oh, pretty, yeah. co pretty that, compelling that was in the rust yeah that, that was in youngstown ohio which is sort of the heart of the u.s rust belt in fact that youngstown used to be called steel city usa and they had miles of steel mills lining the uh the river um in that valley um and now of course it's just a it, it is a metaphor for the hollowing out of america uh by um globalization you know neoliberalism um uh, many many factors have come together to uh turn that place into a, a very sad place to live what, uh, uh, for many 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 people who who come f came from you know generations of mm, families who made mm -hmm. a good living uh you know working class people who who had good jobs union jobs and um and now uh if they're lucky you know they're working two jobs one at walmart at minimum wage and another at mcdonald's at minimum wage it's uh I, I don't, and, you know, and you, you ask, well, how could it have been pre prevented? Um, so that's a tough question. Well, it uh, it is basically a, it's offshoring of manufacturing right, had a right. lot to do with it. I I love the way you show um, how deeply political something, and I don't want to reduce this, but how something how yeah. si as simple as having having a job, having meaningful work can make all the difference yeah. in the world to how you vote to to um, right. you know right. this is a boy you can't get much more tangible than than meaningful work that pays well that provides for my family yeah. Yeah. And, and you want me to do what you want me to support your party but you're going to do this instead and i think what's really interesting to me in the film is how you show this is not really either or here this is both and this is democrats mm -hmm. and republicans mm -hmm. who are frankly misbehaving absolutely and the other thing that 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 makes that rust belt town of youngstown uh a, a metaphor a powerful metaphor for for the corporate coup d'etat so to speak for the the hollowing out of america by um un, untrammeled and unregulated corporatism and 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 uh unlimited virtually unlimited political donations to politicians uh it's 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 a great metaphor because it's an area that uh, sort of explains how we ended up with President Donald Trump, mm -hmm. or they ended mm -hmm. up. Thank mm -hmm. God, we are Canadians. Right. But, <laughs> uh, not you know, not that we have, uh, but not that we we do not have similar problems here. Uh, Google SNC lab line. Right. Right. Uh, but, but, uh, um, well, it shows the direct. Power, it shows the yeah. direct connection. It shows the the power of the, yeah. the, of, the, of the of the personal. It shows how important responsibility and choice in these things really are. It seems to me. I, I uh, yeah. I thought that was a fascinating sort of yeah. layer to the film. Tell me, did you read the Unconscious Civilization uh, when it came out in in ninety five? I was actually taking a mass media course at York University yeah. at the time and read the book. What, what was your experience? Good for you. Yeah, yeah. It was, well, yeah. I came to it. No, I came to it much later than you. Um, I uh, let's see. When did I read it? I I I think I read it after I I uh, I had interviewed Chris Hedges from for the previous documentary All right. Government's Life, and um, and also Jeremy Scahill, and actually the. I, here's the circuitous route by which I came to John Ralston Saul's Unconscious Civilization, where he coins the term uh, corporate coup d'etat, or he says something like, you know, and this is in 1995 when he wrote this, that, that you know, it could be said we were in the midst of a, uh, a slow motion coup d'etat in which corporatism is strengthening and democracy is weakening. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, it was such a brilliant, uh, almost prophecy because no i don't i'm not aware of anybody else who quite uh nailed it like that in 1995 but um 
I remember Jeremy Scahill said something to me in the interview, and Jeremy Scahill is uh, an investigative journalist with The Intercept, uh, which he co-founded along with Glenn Greenwald and uh, Laura Poitras. But um, he said to me, and I use this in All Governments Lie, you know, what people don't realize is that, uh, you know, we long ago had a coup in this country, a corporate coup in which corporations took over, you know, control of politicians in this country. And I remember thinking at the time, that, that could be a documentary. <laughs> so I had <laughs> a little gleam in my right, eye. I didn't right. even know that you could trace that all the way back to John Ralston Saul in 1995. But then months after that, I read a column uh, by Chris Hedges, uh, again, who, who writes uh, for Truth Dig, uh, really a, a very good um, progressive uh, journalism website. And this was in January of 2017, I think. And um, he, he said, um, I've got it up right here. Uh, the, uh, he talks about this thing uh, that Lewis Powell uh, wrote, kind of an infamous memorandum by the guy who was – he was a lawyer for the uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And okay. In 1971, he wrote a, a memo, which uh, people refer to now as the Powell Memo. Uh, but but it basically uh, was advising uh, how the business community could uh, or, or should be on its guard because of the attack. The actual title of the memorandum was Attack on the American Free Enterprise System. That was the title. And uh, as Chris Hedges says at the beginning of his article in, 19, in uh, 2017, um, this this – Powell Memorandum was, quote, the blueprint for the creeping corporate coup d'etat that 45 years later is complete. Mm. And that really jumped out at me, and especially that word blueprint, because right. it actually triggered another thought for me, which is that as I went on to read the rest of the Hedges article, this article is a blueprint for a documentary. Right. <laughs> nice. and, and, uh, and, yeah, that, was, uh, that article was uh, January 23rd. Second of 2017, probably still on the Truth Dig website. So that kind of all brought it together. And he doesn't mention that. I don't think he mentions in that piece that John Ralston Saul was was the guy who first came up coined, with that coined the phrase that term. But it, then, as I read other things by Hedges, earlier things, he he stu he did he did attribute it to John Ralston Saul. Um, in other articles where he had used that term, so um, so so question. So is, that led me. That led me. What a long answer to, to give you the answer that that led me to finally read to f find out where where John Ralston Saul said it. It was in the unconscious civilization. I probably learned that from a Chris Hedges article from earlier, and so I then read the book. <laughs> So do you do you believe in the immutable bylaws of business? To 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 quote uh, <laughs> Ned Beatty, is it from from Network? By the way, if yeah. anyone's listening yeah. and hasn't seen the film Network, you you need to yeah. call me up and borrow my copy or find one somewhere else because it's right. like got to be one of the best films ever made. You can probably find it on YouTube. You can certainly find the you know the most famous scenes. Yeah, and, that's right. And the most famous scene of all is uh, is. Um, is it Howard Beale? It's Howard Beale, yeah. Matt, Matt is hell, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yelling out the window, or right. he's telling yeah. America to go to its windows and open your window and yell out, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. That's the famous, the most famous. But the clip that I used is not that clip, and it, it's less well known. Um, and it's a scene where um, uh, this captain of industry, played by Ned Beatty, is is talking to um, uh, Howard Beale, the network anchor man, who's kind of uh, gone off the reservation. Who plays Howard Beale again? Um, oh, off the top uh, of my head, legendary. Yeah, actor. yeah, uh, uh, a legendary actor. P P it's it's not William Holden. It's um, Peter Finch. Bang, bingo. I, now wait a minute. Is it Peter Finch? 
Well, maybe okay. not. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to Google it while we're talking. Okay, got it. It's, yeah. it's not Peter Finch. Uh, but anyway, uh, he, he, that, there's a great scene in there. Where, where, as, you, as you say, he, he, he's giving a lecture to this anchor man who has, you know, on the air, had the audacity, I think, to... I forget. It's so long since I saw the movie. Well, but, it's ni- 1976, said, right? Speaking, speaking of prophetic voice, right? It's Yeah, yeah. And he says... You know, uh, something to the effect that um, uh, you talk about the nations of today, you know, I'll tell you who the nations of today are, you know, Exxon, right. AT&T, right. Yes. Uh, Dow Chemical. Those are the nations of today. And and then, then there was that quote that you just mentioned. Uh, I used two different clips of, of kind of this from the same um, – the, well, the other the other one you use, I think, is I'm, am, yeah. am I getting through to you, Mr. Beale, which yeah. just yeah, made yeah. me laugh out loud. Well, um, I am just going to Google. Here's this live Googling on a podcast. Live Googling um, on a podcast. How crazy is that? Here we are trying to figure out who this is, and we both have the power of the Internet at our hands. Yeah. Bill. Well, Faye Dunaway was in and it for I, sure. We're, we're, oh, yeah, she was great. She Robert was the, Robert Duvall uh, net, as well. Network executive. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to watch it again, too. Uh, yeah, it, did you, no, it's Peter Finch. Yes. Did you say Peter Boyle? Uh, Peter Finch, I think. We may have to oh, rewind okay. and check up on that, though, uh, okay. just to be, just to be anyway, sure. Peter yeah. Finch. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Peter. Uh, he's looking down on us now. That's right, thinking, yes. What a yeah. couple of idiots. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> mad as hell, and he's not going to take it he's anymore. He's not going to take yeah. it anymore. Okay. I thought it was also, I thought it was really interesting, too, that, that Chris Hedges said, you know, Trump's a symptom. He's not the disease. And, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. that it's as if yeah. that there's been this sort of, you know, what would, I think Jared Diamond calls it a creeping normalcy. It's like this incremental um, push towards this corporate uh, yeah. take take over yeah. corporate coup d'etat right it's it's it it it's it's been happening for a long time right and and uh, just to finish off actually something we were talking about earlier uh, the reason youngstown is 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 a great metaphor for the the corporate coup d'etat is that that's an area the mahoning river valley uh that that when it was steel city usa uh and and uh, it, it was, you know, it was Democratic country. Right, it was, it was right. The Democratic Party, generations of these people voted Democratic. Uh, and at one time, the Democratic Party actually cared about working class people. Mm, I mean, mm. part of the reason was that they were they were getting, you know, they were getting um, funding from unions, which which is fine. But from the labor movement, uh, which which wanted a party that would represent working class interests. Well, now there is no labor movement virtually. It's mm, almost mm totally disappeared. Uh, the corporations uh, did everything they could to make that happen. And, and so, uh, so now the, the Democratic Party takes, you know, most of its money from corporations, just like the Republican Party. And uh, so these people who for generations had voted Democratic in this, you know, Mahoning River Valley area where Youngstown is and where all the steel mills were, um, and they voted twice for Barack Obama, mm. a black man, to be president of the United States. Uh, and again, so so that kind of gives a lie to people say uh, who say, "Oh, they're just a bunch of racist hillbillies." Right. You know, the, those people who voted for Trump. That it's more complicated than that. Yes. Like, so these people, after voting twice for for Obama, uh, they, which would suggest they're not racist. Um, they just felt so uh, betrayed by both political parties, by the establishment of both political parties, that they were swayed and persuaded and conned by a, a fast talker, who a slick talker, who they'd been watching on TV, um, you know, portraying himself as God's gift to, uh, you know, uh, the business community, right. you know, this, uh, uh, you know, reality television is about as far from reality as you can get, as most as people really realize, I think. Uh, so, so he blows into town, this fast-talking salesman, 
saying and running against both parties. Trump was running against the establishments of both parties, and that's why they decided to vote for him because there was no way they were going to vote for the establishment again. And uh, as one person uh, that we met there said, that there's no way I was going to vote for another Bush or another Clinton. Right. And um, and instead, they, and believe, inst- they believe Trump's uh, bullshit, basically. And instead, uh, they, they, they vote for, as, as Cornell West says, a, a thug, a neo-fascist, and a gangster, which again, yeah. I mean, only Cornell West could say that, right? I mean, it just, yeah, yeah. it's so... And they, they didn't see him that way. They, they, these are not people, you know, even who, uh, uh, not that it's a be-all and end-all, but these are not people who are reading the New York Times. Uh, you know, these are not people who are uh, checking out uh, Amy Goodman on Democracy Now. They're just, what they knew about Trump was from watching him on The Apprentice. Right, right. And, he's, yeah, uh, yeah, he's relatable. Sadly, he's a business guy. Yeah. He's going yeah. to he's, he's yep. get the job done. And he's saying what I believe That's about right. the establishments of both of these parties. He's right. attacking them, calling them a bunch of hypocrites, even even saying they're dominated by lobbyists, mm. which is what he, mm. what he he said about you know the other um, his opponents who were seeking the uh, Republican nomination. Like, oh, they've got all their lobbyists here. I don't have any lobbyists. Well, you know, it was all whatever it was. It worked sadly. Um, it was a close election, but but uh, much to everyone's surprise, certainly mine, he won. And and then you know the corporate establishment, who probably thought just as much as the rest of us that, that Trump was an idiot, uh, they saw him as a useful idiot. Right, right, a step a stepping stone of a sort. Hey, Fred. Sadly, we're going to have to wrap up in a couple of minutes. And before I get to sort of where you take us in the film, and and you know compassion and kindness and the other and through this conversation yeah. over tea, which is just such a beautiful way for the for me for the film to to resolve, and I guess it doesn't really resolve. It's this is about an ongoing conversation and about how we can actually, you know, make a difference and so on. Can we talk a little yeah. bit about the one of my favorite? I think it's going to go down as one of my favorite moments in in journalism, and that is, and I forget who the the, the journalist is, but you're shooting in the hallway. Uh, in Washington, I'm assuming the the woman politician yeah. who will not answer, and you've got the back of her head, and you're following her, and you you just yeah. you hold yeah. the camera. I mean, this extended shot of of just not right. wanting to engage, not even going to give the that question. That woman you're clicks. talking about, yeah, the, the woman you're talking about is is was a former uh, part of the uh, George W. Bush administration. Uh, I think she was an advisor in Homeland Security or something. And uh, she is now uh, a, a major shareholder and executive uh, in a defense uh, mm, industry, right? Uh, a, a company that that uh, makes money off of war. Basically, they build the uh, the uh, the Hummer, or the uh, or the Humvee. Oh, right, um, the vehicles. W- which now has, as we show a clip from their promotional video, it now they now mount machine guns on it. Right. So it, it's like a little mini. Uh, well, it's 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 not a tank, but it you know it it, it, it it's uh, what would they it's, call it's it? Major, armored armored personnel a carrier system. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think so. Yeah, um, but uh, so now she's working and profiting from from that company, and you can see her, folks. You can see her almost every week on CBS News as a, a expert consultant. Uh, former Bush administration homeland security official and never, ever hear mentioned that she's also the head of the, de- the defense right. industry right. or one of the heads. And never mentioned by the so-called journalists at, at CBS News who, I mean, uh, they must know. I mean, you know, of course they know. Well, th- yeah, but, this is this is the culpability, right? And this is this is the yeah. contrast with personal responsibility and choice and ethics and all those things. Tell me, tell me a little bit as we as we wrap up. Uh, uh, com- compassion in the other Cornell West saying, you know, something about the human condition. You know, we're both wonderful and 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 terrible at the same time. And 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 then later yeah. later yeah. in the interview, saying he think he hopes that there's a Trump. Uh, um, 
not not that he hopes, but he feels like that there's a Trump and a Martin Luther King inside of every American. Yeah. I think that's a really yeah. fascinating notion. Absolutely. I mean, it's you know, I think it's really important to to read, uh, and if you're lucky enough to you know talk to philosophers. You know, because they they have a wonderful overview and an insight, and I would I would say that um, you know uh, Cornell West is a philosopher, mm -hmm. and 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 that Sean Ralston Saul is a philosopher, and uh, I uh, you know it it sounds almost too lofty to say uh, oh yeah you know read philosophers, but um, it's 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 you get a kind of a, a uh, a higher level of uh, of discerning, reasoning, uh, observation from from people who are at the highest levels of that kind of thing, like Cornell West and John Ralston Saul, and huge, and, huge, and, huge uh, fan of both yeah. of them. And p my listeners yeah. are my listeners are going to think you I egged you on. I, I've got a master's degree in philosophy, Fred. I studied. Uh, oh and, my God! Yeah, well, there, I, see, I didn't know that. I wasn't <laughs> buttering you up. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you I'm glad you admitted it on on air because uh, that's so funny. But I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, the idea I think of philosophy is to ask deeper questions. It's to it's to try to peel yeah. back the layers. At least have a conversation that's that's meaningful. Meaningful and 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 you know just this sort of pro proverbs like notion of iron sharpening iron, right? And and yeah. and I think yeah. that's what Chris Hedges is talking about. I think it seems to me yeah. anyway. Yeah. And I, I so love that he kind of winds up saying that we can save the world one person at a time. I mean, I and I yeah. think you really yeah. that thread for me of hope that runs throughout your film is 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 really quite wonderful in in a film that's really on some levels pretty darn bleak. Yeah. Well, yeah. David, thank you very much, uh, yeah. first of all, for, for oh. saying that. And, oh. Uh, oh. yeah, I, 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 I think some people, um, you know, I, I've had a few screenings uh, and Q&As um, where people have, have said, oh, the film is so bleak. And I just remind them, <laughs> you know, it, it's not it. I don't think it is bleak. No, I don't. I don't yes, either. Do I disagree. Show, we show uh, a terrible state of democracy and society in uh, in America, and you could say in the world. Uh, but um, yeah, we do, especially towards the end. We we I tried to offer that overview, that philosophical overview, and and which very much is is hopeful when when you hear what. Um, Particularly John Ross and Saul and and Chris Hedges and Cornell West. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and yeah. and how do and and the question I think is how do we get to the Martin Luther Luther King in, inside yeah. all of us, I thought, right? I, I mean, what a what a beautiful notion, Fred. Thanks so much for your time today. I, I we've been talking to Fred Peabody about his new film, Corporate Coup d'État. Fred, it's coming to hot docs. Not really sure when exactly people are going to be listening to this, but we do know that there's going to be a theatrical release uh, later in May. Uh, Vancouver, That's Toronto, right. and Calgary, um, and I would imagine, imagine too, eventually it'll be on-demand video of some kind somewhere. But yeah, we, yeah, and yeah. We, we hope to get theaters in other cities uh, yeah. in Canada and the U.S. But right now, the the ones we definitely have booked are, um, you know, Toronto, Vancouver, and Calgary. But uh, I'm sure we'll get it to other cities, and 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 there are festivals also, other festivals in Canada that we may show up at in. Uh, in your town and you're you're well uh, you're right it will eventually i i think be on itunes or something like that uh but where you by the way you can rent all governments lie on itunes <laughs> that's right. shameless I, shameless that's right. plug you might as well uh, get that but, in but, there yeah. um i i uh, i should mention that at super channel uh which is a pay service in canada as you probably know uh they were there from the beginning as a, a supporter and uh investor in this uh, film and so they will be broadcasting it uh, on their uh, on their cable channel, Super Channel, and and when they do that, they also have it available uh, for streaming, mm. uh, but but only if you sub subscribe to Super Channel, right. sadly. But um, you have to wait for it on iTunes down the road, I guess. 
if, well, you, if you don't catch it. Well, it's a it's a delightful film. It's entertaining. It's it's challenging. It is it is kind of bleak, but I disagree with that that uh, that person. I think it's yeah. it's like like Cornel West said. He said, "What did he say?" He said, "One of the great or the three great mysteries of life: history, love, and life, or something." He said near the end of the film, and I couldn't I couldn't. I agree know. More. Yeah, yeah. It's, he is so good. At, oh, at, he's at, wonderful. At focusing yeah. things in you know half a sentence. That, that that speak volumes that's and right. which you've that's never right. heard quite said quite that way before. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Thank, thanks for joining yeah. us today, Fred Peabody, on his new film, uh, The Corporate Coup d'etat. Thanks, Fred. Thank you.